Hello my friends, it's Lisa here from Arcane and Stellar with a pick a card reading for you today. <laughs> this is a timeless reading, so whenever you come across this, it can be, you know, for you if you feel drawn to watching a specific pile. But in this reading, we're going to be looking at your person or the person on your mind. What are their favorite things about you? What do they love about you? Of course, this can also apply to maybe general people, but um, I guess I'm kind of going in with the aim of an individual, you know? Um, so someone that you might be thinking of and you're wondering what they like about you. That's kind of where I'm going with this. But yeah, <laughs> so we have three groups today. So we have group one here with this uh, clear quartz. And group two here with Rainbow Moonstone, and group three with Howlite. So the timestamps will be down below. I encourage you to use your intuition to help lead you to the pile that's calling to you. And I will see you in your reading, okay? And for those of you that, you know, are interested in personal readings, that information is all down below in the description box, okay? So take care, guys, and see you in your reading. Hey guys, if you chose group number one here with this clear quartz heart, this is your reading. So let's find out what the person on your mind loves about you or likes about you, depending, like I said. <laughs> so let's get started and see what kind of cards are here. I'm going to pull out the tarot first and then we'll look at the oracle cards. We have the king of swords, judgment, the magician, the Seven of Swords and the Nine of Cups. Interesting. And then we have as well, Wisdom. Be open to new experiences. Let go of control issues. Law is not justice and awakening. Ooh, this is an interesting one. So for some of you, of course, you might be asking about someone you're interested in romantically. For others of you, maybe it's just a friend or somebody you know. Uh, I can see a lot of different vibes in this particular group. Uh, so again, it might resonate with a lot of different people, but we are starting out with the King of Swords energy here. So some of you could be, you know, kind of embodying a, like an air energy, a masculine air energy. But again, usually I consider the King of Swords to be very, you know, truthful, honest, direct. Again, this could imply that maybe there's a lot of Gemini here, like, well, some Gemini. So some of you might be Gemini, but, uh, we have all air signs, of course, so with the King of Swords. It could be Libra, Gemini, or Aquarius. But we do have quite a lot of air here in this particular um, in this particular group. So yeah, but again, the this idea of being fair, trustworthy, honest, that kind of thing, very sharp-minded. I would say that this person thinks that you are a very capable person, and they like that that you have an independent streak about you. You might also be very good at like might be, for some of you, it might be that you're good at like language or you're just an interesting person to talk to. You might have a way of speaking that they really admire and perhaps the way that you share your thoughts is very interesting to them. I would say this person generally feels very warm around you. They feel like you're a very warm person, a very kind person and in some cases, guys, this the person on your mind might also feel as if you really kind of are a, a dream come true in some way, <laughs> that or you really fulfill them anyways, I would say, for sure. <laughs> There's a lot of fulfillment here. I think this person really feels good about you, um, generally. So that's a good, that's a good sign, right? <laughs> the, there's also something, something here about, we have this like judgment card and then we have awakening here. So I find that fascinating because this could imply that the person is very much feeling as if you've changed them in some way or that you are life changing in some way. That maybe you're representing some completely different, uh, hmm. it's interesting. Maybe for some of you, of course, you might be from different areas or something like that and maybe you guys just provide totally different experiences, you know, based off of different lifestyles as an example. Um, but there's something about you that feels very spiritual to them or they feel very spiritually connected to you um, in some kind of way, like almost like it was destiny or fate for you guys to come together. And again, this person might feel that you're helping them in some way through their own transformations because we talk about in this card the spiritual transformations and spiritual transformations don't always have to be, sometimes I feel like that word can imply like it's 
it's something <laughs> kind of uh, like religious or something like that. But our spirit goes through many different types of changes. So again, you guys might find yourself at a place or they might find themselves at a place where there have been changes or there's some sort of transition in their life. Um, and maybe there's some sort of support here um, in this connection. And maybe they feel quite like you have good advice or that there's a there's a certain wisdom to you as well. You might also be, I wonder if some of you are like doing something with your hands um, as an example, like maybe you guys play an instrument or you draw or you create something with your hands, um, that kind of thing for some of you, not all of you. They might like that about you. If that's the case, again, communication, I would say this person generally likes, you know, another thing I'm going to say here, actually very loyal. I think this person trusts you to kind of keep their secrets to sort of, uh, they feel like they're somebody that you they can come to. You, they feel like you are somebody that they can come to, perhaps. There also might be a craftiness and cleverness to you. Maybe you're kind of, you know, smart. <laughs> Again, that kind of uh, vibe there. I see the little raccoon. I'm just looking. He's kind of crafty. The Seven of Swords isn't always a bad card because it can be about knowing when to cut your losses as an example. So maybe in some fashion, you've like, you know, made some sort of change in your life and this person admires it. Maybe you left a certain situation or kind of, you know, like some of you might have like, you know, took off from a relationship, a family member or, you know, a toxic situation or something, work, or anything. Um, and this person found it admirable. Um, perhaps that bravery or that self-control. Again, really highlighted here how much this person really admires your wisdom. Because in the Oracle card here, we have wisdom, <laughs> obviously. And it says, experience, uh, experience and failure lead to wisdom. Apply wisdom to a present situation. Learn from the spirit world and its collective knowledge. Well, again, experience and failure lead to wisdom. And apply wisdom to a present situation. So again, there might be some way in which you're kind of applying wisdom in your current cir circumstances that they think is like, you know... You're doing things the right way, as an example. But for others of you, I feel like maybe there have been some sort of like discussions about what's right, what's wrong, or some philosophical type of ideas that you guys kind of uh, meet on, or they've heard you say some things that were kind of like, I guess, philosophical or like, you know, an idea about life, I guess you could say. I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. <laughs> and, and, and they really found it like to be full of wisdom, as an example. But we also have someone who's very open-minded as well, right? Because it says, be open to new experiences. So it feels like another thing that this person really loves about you is that you seem to be open-minded. You're into something different. You're unusual, not just a run-of-the-mill person. And uh, again, maybe you're always willing to kind of try something new. And they like that. <laughs> And, and that's interesting, because and this is another thing. It's like, so we'll let go of the control issues, right? It says, allow the situation to unfold naturally. Well, now, for some of you, if you are a very chill person, I would say this person really adores that. They might like the fact that you're not too controlling and that you are kind of relaxing to be around. <clears throat> what was that? I was gonna... Another thing is that maybe there is something healthy about you because of some experiences you've had. So you kind of have a, a healthier type of behavior than maybe what they've previously experienced as well. So like if maybe they had like a jealous person in their life before, they appreciate that you're not seemingly so jealous as an example or so controlling or maybe you don't harp on them like other people do as an example, that kind of stuff. And then we have laws, not justice, rules that are not fair. And again, I think this kind of ties back into the whole wisdom thing. Uh, it feels as if like this person really feels like you have a balanced approach to things. And again, I, I feel like there must be some, you know, the judgment card usually talks about somebody with a lot of life experience and who's been through some stuff before. And because like you usually, if it comes up in like a love reading to describe someone, it could be somebody who's been married before as an example, or it could be somebody who, you know, has had like a lot of life experience. So, again, I think that wisdom comes from some sort of experience 
experiences you've had. Again, it could be age or just certain things that have kind of happened to you that kind of opened your eyes to different types of possibilities. But definitely a creative mind. I think this person really adores that part about you too. So let's get let's get some charms and see what pops out. I took a lot. <laughs> Let's see, we've got Aquarius here. Always. Cancer. So let's see. Again, the ghost dog kind of reminds me of a zero. Uh, <laughs> kind of reminds me of like a friend. Again, so there might be like a friendliness to you, a loyalty to you that this person really likes. Like they adore that. We have the swan here. So again, there might be a lot of admiration for your... Maybe for some of you have like kind of like a long body or something like that. <laughs> or some sort of elegance or grace or... There's just a way that you hold yourself. Again, I think of swans as very beautiful, so I would say that this person, no matter your gender, it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, finds you to be like a very beautiful person, like physically attractive. And I like I like the little cherries here because I feel like this person really gets along with you. Like they feel like you're a pair, <laughs> in, in, for sure, or that you make a good pair as an example. Maybe some of you kind of do that let's see here interesting that we have the little toxic uh <laughs> skull and crossbones this makes me think of uh, again there's something like not toxic about you <laughs> that I'm, i wonder if this person's had some serious issues <laughs> or something in their past and, and and you kind of represent a different type of person than they've experienced before we have uh we have virgo cancer and uh, Aquarius. So we have three different signs here. Like I said earlier, I kind of saw Gemini. Of course, there's water energy here too. The only thing I didn't really see here in this one is fire energy. Um, or, pen, or earth, really. I guess, well, except for Virgo is earth sign. So, But yeah, so any of these signs might resonate with you. Of course, Aquarius and uh, could mean that you guys, you know, talk through the internet or that uh, you uh, are friends. Again, friendship is usually highlighted with the, the 11th house of Aquarius. So, uh, and then Virgo is the um, house of like, you know, six houses. It's, it's health and work and routine and stuff like that. So again, you might have a daily routine to talk. Maybe they like talking to you on a daily routine, you know, like every day. Uh, they might like spending time in groups with you as well. Uh, or maybe they like how you act in groups. We have as well, let's see, we have a key. Keys tell me that this person really loves how, they feel like you're very significant in your in their life and there's something like different about you. Like maybe they feel like you have a key to their heart for some of you um, or that you have some key to them in some way, like to kind of unlock them in some way. We also have this always with the heart here. So again, there might be you know, a lot of like, uh, like good warm feelings here that could like love or, you know, <laughs> something that could be love in the future. We have mom. So some might, if you, especially for those of you, there might be something about mother. Maybe some of you are a mother, um, or are close to your family or, you know, value your mother and they might admire that kind of depending on what the situation is. Let's see here. We have this mermaid tail. I always think of this one as kind of like something hidden because it's just a tail. So it's kind of like maybe there's something that they want to get to know more about you or maybe you always are offering some sort of new information about yourself that they like uncovering. There is a sense of independence here, I think, on your end. Independence and kind of an attitude of... Uh, 
Like, maybe not clingy, you know? Because we have a cat showing up as well. And the horse, too, which I think of as kind of like a freedom, an animal of freedom. So, yeah. <laughs> but there's still, like, loyalty here, because I see the elephant, and I think of elephants as very loyal. Again, very family-oriented. And then we have that cancer term, too, so there's some kind of focus about your family. Uh, maybe you, they admire how much you admire your family. <laughs> they might admire how much how close you are to your family or your interest in your roots is an example or having some kind of a uh, certain background we also have the peace sign here so there might be something very peaceful and easy a peaceful easy feeling and of course there's that star so again i feel like this person really like thinks you're a great person they think that you're kind of a star in their eyes you know <laughs> that kind of thing and then we have of course this little teardrop maybe there's something sensitive about you that's an interesting one. It's like a little crystal teardrop. Okay, and then we have a planet. So again, astrology could be something. Maybe this person likes the way you talk about astrology or learning about astrology or maybe you're into astrology or something like that. That could be for some of you. And then we have London and Paris. So again, maybe there's like a traveling connection here or uh, some maybe you've traveled a lot or you dream about traveling and this person really likes that. Um, maybe you guys come from two different places and they like that as well. Because, uh, you know, the London and Paris, two different cities and two different countries. So there's that possibility as well. Oh, and then we have the leaf here. So again, there's something significant. Because I feel like le this leaf here is kind of reminds me of like turning leaf. So in some way this person feels or likes the fact that maybe you're significant in their life. And, and maybe especially in terms of changing something. Or like a change in their life. Uh, maybe you brought changes to their life in some way. And uh, they like that part about you, you know. But that is what I'm seeing for you that group, that chose group number one. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm like stumbling over my words here. We do have Belle too, so that was kind of there a little bit. Maybe that's, it kind of went up here, but maybe that's significant. But anyways, if you enjoyed the reading, I'd love to know down below in the comments. Subscribe, please. If, you, if, if you're new here, I'd love to see you again if you like the content anyways. And I... Uh, what else do I need to say? <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. I hope that this finds you blessed. And uh, I'm looking forward to see you guys in the next reading, okay? So personal reading information is all down below in the description box. So I will see you in the future, okay? Take care. Hello, my friends. If you chose group number two here with this rainbow moonstone, this is your reading. So let's find out what the person on your mind loves about you. So let's get started. I'm going to start laying some cards out here. What I think is cute about this one is this is very much romantic, I think, here for you guys on, on this group, uh, for sure. Because <laughs> we have, well, we have the sun here. So, and then we have the high priestess once. And then we got the high priestess again. And then we have the queen of swords, the lovers and the Nine of Cups. Okay, so I thought I'd just show you the cards up, up close a little bit because I know I'm going to put them down on the table. And somebody just actually commented recently on my, my video asking if I could name the cards because I can't see them. So I thought, well, I'll do both. <laughs> I'll bring them up closer to the camera for a minute at least so you can see them and then we can, uh, you know, talk about them. So, okay. Let's see. There we go. Where to start? I guess I'll start over here with the sun. I would say that this person really loves your sunny disposition, that perhaps there's a certain childlike energy to you, but a happiness and optimism, like kind of something very cheerful about you. And again, you might make them feel very cheerful. Maybe you bring like, a, you know, have a beautiful smile and like a warm heart kind of. And this person just really, you know, soaks that up <laughs> they really like it and uh there could be like of course like this kind of like bravery too as well i think of the sun is also kind of a brave kind of card because it's associated with leo energy but generally i would say just a very happy person to be around uh you make them feel good and uh and they really like that about you now the high priestess came out twice which i thought was very fascinating so there's definitely this energy of somebody who's very spiritual, very knowledgeable, very wise. 
there's also perhaps a like I'm going to say, I feel like this person, whatever label they use, you know, everyone has a different idea about different labels for like soulmates and stuff like that. Um, you know, this person, even if they wouldn't say this word specifically, this person feels like you are very special to them in terms of like a soul connection. You know, like there's just something else about you. You're different than the rest. And uh, so I would say that this person probably would consider you like to be a soulmate of theirs or have that vibe about you. Uh, and they really like, they like that, <laughs> uh, obviously. But <laughs> yeah, there's definitely, because it says we also have that soulmate card. But even without this card, I would have said the same thing with these two high priestesses and then the lovers as well showing up in the spread. So you may, now the high priestess is usually, you know, a woman of mystery. And that doesn't mean that you're a woman, but it does mean that you have some sort of mysterious way about you. But what I like about this energy is it doesn't mean you're secretive or you're hard to get to know per se. I think that this person sees you as a very open, open person. But maybe, I think for a lot of you, for a good portion of you, <clears throat> this is kind of, this person feels like there's always something new to learn about you. Like you always have all these different stories or things kind of tucked away, a lot of different knowledge. And again, for some of you, you might even be a bit younger or have like this kind of vibe about you that's a bit younger at times, yet you still hold a lot of knowledge as an example. So like even for a few of you, like maybe some people would label you at first glance is kind of like a ditz or something, or maybe you're not interested in anything too deep. Um, and then once you get to know you, you're actually very much into deep things, <laughs> you know, like you're um, definitely into spiritual topics, I'm guessing. For some of you, it might be astrology. That can be the high priestess. Um, astrology, anything mysterious. Some of you like might like, maybe for the both of you, you like murders or something like, you know, crimes or kind of doing things that are, you know, of that nature. <clears throat> Again, the t two high priestesses could indicate that the two of you share secrets or some sort of secret connection as an example, or again, you might just be very loyal to each other and you're um, sharing, you know, being trustworthy, like, you, you know, and this person might really love that about you if you're a very trustworthy person. And uh, I get that because the Queen of Swords, I think it's someone who's very trustworthy, um, very honest and blunt and very knowledgeable, very wise. So I would say that this person really likes how much knowledge you have because I feel like a lot of you are very, very smart people and again, have a lot of inner depth, a lot of spiritual depth on your end. There's also, I think, a vibe here of you going after what you want that this person really likes. The Nine of Cups is to me all about our emotional fulfillment as an individual and uh, again, doing things that make you happy. So you might, I feel like this person really admires the way that you kind of uh, do things that make you happy as an example. They like to see you smile and they like when you're kind of fulfilling yourself in some way or how you're fulfilling yourself. Obviously, we cannot ignore the lovers. <laughs> <laughs> this person loves like how much of a connection you have. I really do feel like for a lot of you, this person uh, that you're thinking about, they really feel like you're something special to them. There's definitely this soulmate vibe as we have here. And there's something different about you than the rest. This is a person who really feels like you are the one, you know, there are no, there's nobody else like you because we also have this card over here that says you are rare and free. There are not many like you. So again, you, you have a very different vibe than a lot of people that they've been around. Uh, you're just different than anyone they've ever met. And I feel like that really helps you stand out to this person as being someone very special to them. <clears throat> oh, that's funny that I was talking about the Nine of Cups and I was talking about something, maybe some of you are doing something that's kind of fulfilling to you um, at this time. And we have this card here and it says, your spirit sparkles when you connect with what you love. So again, this person might really like to see you doing something um, that you love to do, as an example, whatever it is in your life, um, whether it's like a hobby or a job or something like that. Or um, this, I think this person really likes to see you happy and fulfilled. And for those of you that are kind of fulfilling yourself by doing things that you like to do, this person really likes that about you. Um, because sometimes even there are some people who don't really know what makes them happy. So again, this might be somebody who's like, wow, 
they know what makes them happy and they're doing it. You know what I mean? That kind of vibe. Um, <clears throat> sorry. We also have apology. You can expect the apology you want to hear, which is interesting. Obviously, I don't always pay too much attention to the message here. It, I think how I feel this resonates is that perhaps maybe for some of you, especially, uh, that you've had some sort of instance where you apologize to this person and they really admired the strength that took as an example. Uh, maybe for some of you, you just have an overall vibe of somebody who knows when, you know, what's right and wrong and you take, you know, you, you say sorry when it's needed, you know, right here with the Queen of Swords, you know when to kind of use your words, you know. <laughs> sorry, I said you know like 50 times. I hate when I do that. <laughs> I do that sometimes and I'm just like, ah! And it's like, you know how you can like hear it coming out and you're like, stop, stop. And you keep doing it. Yeah, that's me. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I get a very mature way of communication here. So I would say that this person really, really likes the way that you kind of own up for your mistakes and the things you've done that were wrong. You know, when you make a mistake, you, you say sorry. And uh, they like that. And then we have, of course, love. So... <laughs> with this beautiful image. It says, your relationship with yourself and others needs reassessing. Open up to love, opens up to love others by unblocking negativity. Embrace love without fear. Make it unconditional. So it's very interesting because it's like, there's definitely, well, first of all, I think this just represents that this person really feels a strong connection with you. But of course, with some of these uh, statements down here, your relationship with yourself and others needs reassessing. So maybe, again, you've kind of fairly reassessed certain things in your life, and this person sees the logical side of you, but also the spiritual side. And there's something very deep about you. I, I'm, I'm feeling like a lot of you must have had or have had or, or have often a lot of, like, philosophical conversations with this person, or you talk about some depth, you know, things with depth. And, again, I feel like maybe in, in love, too, you might have some ideas that feel very fulfilling to this person. Like there's some sort of level of maturity here and wisdom that's come from maybe past experiences um, or maybe you just have an inner knowing or wisdom about how to be as a person in a relationship as an example. Embrace love without fear and make it unconditional as well. So again, unconditional love and acceptance of other people. Uh, I feel like a lot of you have a very deep deep heart in this group and they really like that about you so that's what i'm seeing in the cards let's get some charms i'm going to do some charms here for this group well in all the groups let's see spirit guides in each Okay, let's see here. We've got quite a few zodiac signs. Let's see. We've got Taurus, Capricorn, Libra. What else have we got here? Oops. We've got Virgo. I think that's all the zodiac charms I'm seeing. So yeah, and, and like I said, we have a lot of different things over here. So any of these signs could be representative. But we also have, like I said, Taurus, Capricorn, Libra, and um, Virgo here. So a lot of earth energy. All three earth signs are here. Um, and the charms. And then there's Libra here. Well, of, co of course, going to this, you know, Libra, <laughs> let's just start there. I mean, that's the seven, that represents the seventh house and partnerships. So this person probably sees you as a marriage partner partner material or a marriage partner or somebody that they have a great one-on-one -on -one connection with or that they could th there's a lot of potential here and again there's a sense of a balance and justice with other people um that's what libra in that house is really about is about meeting with other people and kind of having that one-on-one -on -one experience and uh, so again i think this person sees you as very fair and balanced in general a great communicator, very driven towards, uh, I think this person sees you as somebody who matches a lot of their values and their goals in life. The Cap Capricorn is associated with the 10th house, so some of you might have similar visions or you have a vision of your life that they really admire and they like. Um, Capricorn in the 10th house is really all about 
what we want to be and who we want to become. And so I think a lot of your goals align with this person's goals. And I think even in synastry, I think the 10th house can be quite po quite a positive placement because, um, well, my partner and I, my husband and I have a lot of 10th house um, placements actually. And I... Uh, We've been together for many years, and it's because we have shared life goals, you know. Uh, oftentimes we've had, you know, the same kind of goals or the same kind of vision of life. And that's important for our partnership as an example. So I think that this person looks at you and they see somebody, first of all, that they can relate to. and But they also see somebody who has similar values and, and goals, because Taurus can represent values, you know. And aesthetic, of course, too. Um, I think your aesthetic is very pleasing to this person. They like the way you look, um, that kind of thing morally and stuff like morals can also be in, in, in Taurus in the second house um, so yeah I definitely think ma your mannerisms and the kind of like the way that you are very much vibes with this person we also have uh, Virgo here so Virgo is the sixth house so health routines and stuff like that again if you kind of focus on your health I think this person really um, likes that um, about you <clears throat> there's like that focus on your health we also have live laugh and love so I get a lot of like very friendly vibes like this person really just we have a lot of friendly vibes we have that live laugh and love we have zero the ghost dog <laughs> from uh, nightmare before Christmas so that that definitely gives me friendly vibes and um, oh wow and then we got this one here too and that reminds me of very very much about friendly vibes too this little sun sunflower thing <laughs> smiley face flower um, <laughs> definitely a lot of cheerfulness and peace here. We have the peace sign, which actually came out in group number one as well. So there's like a very peaceful, easy feeling. And I see the ten ten tennis racket. I almost said tennis court. <laughs> and then I just told you that, which I, I could have not said that. And then nobody would have ever known that I almost said tennis court. But tennis racket, it reminds me of like kind of like debating and going back and forth, maybe talking. Like it kind of flows back and forth between the two of you. Um, you know, pretty well and pretty easy. Father of the bride. Well, that's interesting. Maybe some of them really like your father. <laughs> well, it's Father of the Bride. That's interesting. I love that movie. That Like, the movies, Father of the Bride 1 and 2 are, like, some of my most favorite movies of all time. Like, I love those movies. Does anyone else love those movies? Like, I just, I think Steve Martin is the cutest damn thing in the world. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> we've got a banana here. What do bananas make you think of? Well, uh, I think of like, I love banana splits. That's what I love, the ice cream. But uh, <laughs> I guess there's a lot to kind of peel under. You know, maybe on the outside you're a little bit one way, but when you get inside you're very sweet. And uh, there's something different about you. <clears throat> we also have this um, don't, look, uh, don't look back, that's not where you're going. So again, this idea of like maybe traveling or like trying to move forward in life, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, moving on from your past, this person really admires that. We've got the elephant charm, which makes you think of loyalty and family. There's a sense of like independence too, but also some sort of sense of like values, morals, family, that love for it. We also have I can. So a can do attitude, this person really likes that. And then we have this cactus here and it says, you can survive anything. So the things that you have kind of gone through that have given you wisdom, like this person really loves it. And Rapunzel's interesting. Well, I think of Rapunzel as like obviously quite independent, very exploratory. She wants to explore. She feels, she's also like quite intuitive actually if you think about it because she's drawn to these these lamps, right? Or that are, well, I'm thinking of the Tangled cartoon. But she's, like, she's drawn to these like uh, lamps, right? As far as I remember, correct? Honestly, like I haven't, um, I've watched that movie a few times, but like kind of like halfway. It was like when my daughter was watching it, because it came out when she was young. And, uh, but anyways, uh, she knows that they're meant, there's something about them, you know? So again, there's that intuitive connection there, that there's something there, there's something out there, this adventurous spirit that this person really likes. And I, I just get a very driven person, and this person just digs it. We also have the butterfly here, so there's that transformative energy. I can survive anything. And then there's this, like, yeah, this transformative energy here. Very capable person here. We have the unicorn. We have another heart here, so maybe you guys have a big heart that they really admire. We also have sense and sensibility. Very interesting. 
So of course there might be some dynamic here. Maybe some of you really like literature or to read and they love that about you. Again, you might like Sense and Sensibility or maybe there's something about the storyline that really um, reminds you know you of the connection in some way. We have cherries too. So again, there's this idea of like teamwork, camaraderie, friendship, kind of like two peas in a pod or two cherries. <laughs> you know, this person really feels like they have a, a good connection with you or that you, there's that potential for it. So yeah, that is what I'm seeing for you guys that chose group number two. That's that's what we've got. I really hope that this gave you some insight into the person on your mind. I hope it resonated with you and I wish you all the very, very best. Take care guys and I will see you all in the next reading. Oh, and if you want a personal reading, that information is down below in the description box, okay? Take care guys. Hello my friends. If you chose group number three here with this Howlite, this is a reading for you. So let's find out what your person loves about you. Ooh, okay, let's see, nurture. So we have the Four of Wands, the Page of Cups, the Nine of Swords, the Moon, Balance, the Universe, Clock Time, Believe in Yourself and Flirt. Wow, okay, so we have a very accomplished person you must be. Even if you don't feel like it, I think that this person really admires what you have accomplished thus far in your life. I think that a lot of you must be at least somewhat accomplished. Maybe you've graduated school or you've done something that's kind of what this person finds to be an accomplishment. Maybe you've traveled or had some experiences that make you a very well-rounded individual. Um, <laughs> Again, there might be a lot of hopes and dreams about the future and big goals. Uh, I get like a very driven type of person here. So I feel like a lot of you, this person finds you to be, you know, very successful in their eyes or have that potential for success in the future. The moon is very interesting because there's the nine of swords and the moon. What does this person love about you and the page of cups? I feel like for a lot of you, that you you've probably comforted this person at least once or twice for sure because I think that there's something that alleviates their stress or their worries like there's something very freeing about you something that makes them feel kind of nurtured and cared for um, something that just feels very warm and, and kind because we also have nurture here and it says take care of your needs first your nurturing will benefit others only if your needs are met first nurture the new in your life and watch it grow and again, there might be, of course, this like taking care of yourself vibe. Maybe some, a lot of you are kind of like focused on making sure you're taken care of and they like that about you. But I think for a lot of you, this is more so about your sort of nurturing, um, the way you nurture them. And like I said, maybe for some of you, you don't even realize that you do it. It might be that you don't, you haven't necessarily helped this person out of it, you know, some sort of anxiety attack or, or some sort of like you know thoughts that they're having that are really bringing them down but maybe you do more than you realize you know you just have this effect on them that kind of calms them down maybe for some of you of course they like thinking about you or especially like <laughs> that could be with the nine of swords maybe they like staying up at night and thinking about you and sort of dreaming about you uh the <laughs> The, the moon, though, again, there might be some sort of intuitive type of connection here, a spiritual connection. I do see the moon in that in that way sometimes. And, and as well, I th yeah, I think the moon is obviously, you know, connected to, like, very intuitive nature. So, again, some of you might be intuitive type of people. Um, the moon is associated with Pisces. So there's that as well. Again, there might be a very creative nature uh, to you as well. Uh, like art, art, artistic or someone who does something very spiritual or artistic or a little bit different. There might be a little bit of a mysteriousness to you as well that this person really admires. And again, some of you might be world travelers or from a different culture or country and they might like like that about you, like that you're different. Maybe there's a connection, of course, here with the Page of Cups and the Moon in particular to, like, music between the two of you. You might find that you, like, have similar tastes in music or art art in general, uh, any kind of art.
the four of wands could indicate like well the four of wands can indicate a lot of things it can be sometimes like a wedding as an example a party or maybe just like a, a feeling of of uh, stability I'm just looking here in my book I want to look here in my lover's book and just see what it says here I'm kind of curious events where music drama dance or entertainment feature might be especially good places to go at this time enjoy yourself well that's interesting because that's funny and it says here enjoy a delightful phase of dating and flirtation and again what's funny is that we have flirt right here so again maybe there's a flirtatious nature to you that this person really enjoys uh, the way that you flirt and I get that with the page of cups like when you flirt with this person I feel like you would just like oof, warm them up you warm them up <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they're like that there's something very cheerful though I feel like in this in this person like there's definitely a lot of crush energy here possibly uh, with maybe potential for more I think that this person probably dreams of more with you to be honest <laughs> but we have balance it says one person is giving too much in this relationship right so again there's a few things here to be honest I mean some of you they might find that you give more than them and they like that <laughs> that might be for a few of you I think but for others of you it might be that you bring a sort of balance that they're not used to or they feel very balanced with you in general because I don't really see imbalance here so much in these other cards necessarily and that's not really something somebody would love about you anyways so I think we're more going towards a balanced connection of course some of you might be thinking or giving advice about something like that uh, in general like so if this person's having situations in which they're kind of giving more than they're getting out of it especially if they've been doing that they really like that you know if they were they've been giving too much to a certain relationship like a friendship or a romantic partnership or a job or something like that and you've kind of talked to them about it or comforted them that's something that really means a lot to them I would say they really like that about you we have clock time here so time pressure in a rush uh, if you guys are like kind of go-getters and you get a lot of things done and you're kind of busy and you have things to do, they actually like that about you. They like that you're kind of occupied or that you do things with your time. Again, there might be something about time management that this person really likes. Uh, maybe some of you are good at time management. <laughs> But we also have this flirt card. So I, I get a lot of like about flirting. This person generally, I just think, thinks very highly of you and feels very warm around you. And again, there might be some high goals, like some high goals that you have um, for the future. But let's see what comes out in the charms. Okay, let's see what we've got. Oh, that's cute. Okay, we have Capricorn. Again, this idea of very driven person. I was actually telling this in group number two because group number two had Capricorn come out. But Capricorn in the 10th house, I often really find that, you know, in Sinistry as an example, 10th house placements can be very pivotal because you have similar life goals. The 10th house is all about what you want to aspire to be. It's the highest part of the chart. It's where you want to shine. It's what you want. It's what you envision for your future. And when people share synastry there, that means that they're they're kind of meeting in that way. Now, for, if it's bad synastry, of course, then maybe they're not uh, having the same life goals. But when you have placements there, it's like you want to get ahead together. You want to do things together. And uh, I would say that this person feels like... It, which is cute because look at we also have cancer which is the other axis of the tenth house is the fourth house and so these are opposing signs there's a balance here um, represented which is crazy because we have the balance card right there but there is that balance between cancer and Capricorn home versus the public or you know home goals versus like you know big goals in the outside world as an example um, so there's something here. I feel like this person, maybe they find that they meet you in both places, you know. They feel like you have similar home goals as well as like out, outward goals into the world. Um, 
that kind of thing. The tree here reminds me, of course, of maybe health. Maybe this person likes how you take care of your health. But as well, it reminds you of like sturdy roots. We have that nurture here too. So there may be something about kind of like taking care of your family, being connected to your family, or that potential to kind of have something that grows into a family with you or something stable. We have the Eiffel Tower here, which can talk about like maybe there's a love of travel or of seeing new things or cultures as an example. The tennis racket makes me really feel about like going back and forth and kind of like exchanging conversations. Um, maybe you guys are kind of like good debaters or you talk a lot and it kind of flows well back and forth between the two of you. We have find joy in the journey. So there's definitely an optimism to you as you're kind of moving through life. Uh, this always makes me think of the 1% battery charm. Reminds me of like talking until your battery's going to run out. <laughs> It's like they could just keep talking and talking and talking to you until it runs out. We have Little Women. Oh, so maybe some of you like Little Women or they like Little Women or something like that. We have Alice's Adventures in Wonderland as well. So two books. Um, maybe there's a shared interest in books or you've talked about like, or they like how much you like to read or something like that. Let's see here. We have Little Birds. Little Bird. So I think of like talking, chattering, chit, you know, chit chat and stuff like that, talking to you. And again, maybe a little bit flighty and fun. Oh, we have Libra over here. So there's a like a strong partnership here. I think this person sees you as a potential marriage partner or they see you as somebody they could be with or that they get along really well with. We have a cross here too. So crosses can sometimes be about burdens, like handling burdens with, you know, ease. And there with find the joy in the journey, maybe in some way you have like kind of handled a lot of burdens in your life or some problems and you kind of just found joy in it anyways. Or you find joy in life despite the burdens or the problems. And then we have, of course, like with the cross, there could be some religious factor or spiritual factor there that they really like about you as well. <clears throat> so we have this Pegasus which makes me think of like something very magical and that kind of vibe there. Live, laugh, live, laugh and love. So again, there might be a sort of cheerfulness to you. And we have that little four leaf clover. There could be a connection to Ireland or of course, like, you know, it's kind of like a lucky person. Happy go lucky is what I think of. And we have this arrow here. So struck in the heart. <laughs> You've struck this person in the heart. Let's see what else we've got. She believes she could. She believes she could, so she did. So again, you might have a very uh, a way about you that's kind of very. Uh, you get things done, as an example, and you go for those goals, or they believe you could, and they like that about you that they, you're very capable. I feel like this person thinks you can conquer the world. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> like they think you've got it <laughs> uh, together. There's a swan too, so there's a very oh the swan and the cameo really make me think of like beauty this person thinks you're elegant very beautiful they probably like to look a lot at your pictures and they like when you send them or they see them and it says in every fair from fair sometimes declines so this is a, a quote from shakespeare in particular so that might mean something to some of you and then we have the music note so again there might be instruments or music here maybe one of you plays an instrument or maybe there's a strong connection to music here um, a shared love of music we also have this safety pin. I'm very curious. What do you guys think about the safety pin in terms of meanings? See, we used to put them on our jackets when we were kids. I was like a teenage thing to do, but I can't remember why we did that. <laughs> I used to stick them through my fingers too. I was really screwed up. Did anyone ever do that? Like stick needles through their skin? Like just for fun? I used to do it all the time. I'm such a weirdo. Um, I don't know if that's just my Aries stuff or what. Maybe someone else is also very strange. <laughs> Like me. <laughs> I, I, I pierced my belly button once with a safety pin. That, was, that wasn't that was fun. But <laughs> I was in 8th grade. I really just wanted my belly button pierced. But anyways. Uh, <laughs> funny story. But uh, yeah, I don't know. The safety pin might have some sort of meaning. I, I actually, yeah, I've never had that charm come out, I think, before. And I really haven't ever signed a meaning for it. So I'm very curious to see in the comments below what you guys might think about that. We also have the butterfly 
and the leaf. And these talk to me about changes. So this person might admire the way you kind of have transformed in your life or the way you've kind of dealt with changes and endings. Or it may be for some of you, you've helped them kind of let go of certain things or allow things to change in their life, that kind of thing. But that is what I'm seeing, guys, for you guys. That's what I'm seeing, you guys, for you guys. Yeah. That's Lisa. Uh, <laughs> I really hope that this resonated with you, and I hope it gave you some insight into the person on your mind. And uh, I'm wishing you all the very, very best, and take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all in the next reading. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to see you stick around. And, of course, liking and, and commenting is always helpful, but if you want a personal reading with me, that information is also in the description box down below. You can go to my Etsy store, but yeah. Take care, guys, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.